Hello and welcome back to Rara's Adventures. If you have only just joined and would like to help support Rara's Adventures, please hit that subscribe button. Today we are doing an interview with Wayne. Hello and Hello. welcome. Thank you for joining us on Rara's Adventures to help spread awareness. So, we have eight questions mm -hmm. and any that you don't want to answer, just say pass and we'll carry on. Yeah. Okay, so what conditions do you have? I mean, where do I start? I've got a thing called retroparal fibrosis, okay. which is to do with your kidneys. Right. So I've only got one kidney works now. Uh, heart disease. I've got blockages in my heart. Uh, sleep apnea. I don't sleep very well at night. I have to use a mask. And that's about it, really. Yeah. Okay. Few. Yeah. So when was your condition first diagnosed or conditions first diagnosed? The kidney disease was um, probably about 25 years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, about 25 years ago. I um, started off with back, back aches and pains in my stomach and then it got worse and worse and then they said I had an infection in my stomach and everything, and it wasn't. And then they told me that it's basically it's a mass of tissue that grows around the bottom of your kidneys and yeah. squashes them. So like so, strangling. Yeah, yeah, basically yeah. like uteruses that go down to your bladder. It was blocking them and squashing them. Right. right. So they had to put plastic tubes inside <laughs> them to keep them open. Okay. And I've had that ever since, and now only one kidney works, the other one's shrunk down to like that. Mm. So, yeah, I have to watch what I eat and drink. And I have good days and days where I feel like crap. Yeah, I think we can all relate yeah. to that one. What about the sleep? The sleep act, man, that started probably about four years ago, I think it was, three or four years ago. I was having trouble sleep, sleeping, and it was making me really ill, where I couldn't sleep at night at all. I'd like to get half an hour of sleep and then an hour of sleep and it was like that for months. Mm. And then when I went into hospital with my heart, I said to them that I don't sleep very well. And they did a test on me and apparently I woke up 75 times in one night. Wow. So I wasn't sleeping at all basically. Right. But I didn't know I was waking up 75 times so I didn't feel like you that felt to me. Like yeah. you were sleeping. Yeah. Wow. So they give me a mask that blows constant air into my body, into okay. my mouth, and that stops me from having sleep apnea basically. Right. Now I sleep, I only wake up once or twice a night, oh, but I sleep right like through the afternoon up every night. Yeah. It's a bit awkward having a mask with your face, with mask with air blowing into it. At first it was awkward, it was horrible. Mm. It made me feel like I was suffocating. Right. But now I've got used to it, it doesn't bother me. Okay. So yeah. And the downside to that is you end up with lines down your face from the mask in the mornings. Alright. So don't have a fat face. <laughs> Fair enough. So what were your symptoms before you were diagnosed, before you knew you had your illnesses? With rich fibrosis, um it was pains a lot of pains in my testicles. Okay. And I swelled up like a balloon. And it was like being kicked in the bollocks, basically. Wow. The pain was that bad. Yeah. And it was like that for months, and then they swole up, and then that's how they did the tests and found out that I had rich bowel fibrosis. It was to do with, all to do with the same system, you know? Right. And then they did CT scans on me and that, and that's when they found out that I had that, like a, like a tumour, basically, going around you. Right. Wow. Painful, very painful. Sounds like excruciating. Yes. Thing. Yeah. yeah, it was quite bad for quite a number of months, mm. and uh, now they've sort of got it sorted, ish. I still have days where I feel just like really drained and um, dehydrated and stuff like that. Yeah, I have to drink a certain amount of fluid every day. Yeah, I have to take a lot of pills every day. Yes, to control yeah. it. And yeah, they sort of sort of got it right. It's just. Every day's a bonus now when you wake up, so right. you'll make the most of what you got. Yeah. And I've to learned to live with it. And yeah. so my wife, she's learned to, she knows how I feel and 
days when I feel good and when I feel bad. Yeah. And you just have to carry on. Life's too short. Make the most of what Absolutely. You've got. Completely agree. How does your condition affect you physically and mentally? At one point, I was quite depressed. I was to the point where I didn't care if I died. I wanted to die because I was fed up being mm. indoors all the time. Was that in the early stages? Yeah, a few years ago, when, when I, well, five years ago, when I had my heart attack, um, I just had enough. I was sick, fed up with being ill, mm. not being able to do what other people want to do. Like when your kids say, can you go to the park, Dad? It's like, no. And when you want to do other things, it's like, no. It's like certain things we do now, I still have to think about it before we do it. So you're planning yeah. the day out before? Yeah, I can't walk up a yeah. like, flight of stairs without struggling. Yeah. I can't walk on long distances because I struggle. Yeah. And I use a mobility scooter to get around with. It's embarrassing sometimes, people stare at you and think, oh, what are they doing in a scooter, you know? They're just fat and lazy. Mm. But they don't understand look. what's wrong with me to put me in a scooter. No. But, yeah, it's a difficult as well with my heart. I didn't know I was having a heart attack that day. I didn't get really bad pains in my arm. I got pains in my jaw. The ambulance came out, I said, you're fine. I went to stand up and blacked out. I went to the hospital and they said, you had a heart attack. If it doesn't wow. show up on their machines, it's just called a non stemmy heart attack. Okay. So it doesn't show up on any ECG machine. So how did they know it was a heart attack? By blood tests. Oh, they okay. test, apparently when you have a heart attack, your body emits some immune thing or something into your blood, and that's yeah. how they can tell that you've got a heart attack. Oh, wow. But yeah, at the time I didn't realise it was so for months. No. Didn't have no pain in my chest or anything like that. Just really bad jaw ache. Okay, that's something to look out for. Yeah. Well, definitely. What are your managing <coughs> tips to help you better manage your condition? Find a good wife. Find a good wife? Yeah. My wife does a lot for me. Mm. Without her, I wouldn't be here now, to be honest with you. Mm. She does everything I need to do, even though she's had her own problems and gone through quite a bit herself. So and so learning to live with things like, like you said, planning things. Yeah. You have to plan everything every day, what you want to do, where you're going to go. Um, if we go on long distances, we have to plan things like where near a hospital is and stuff like that in case. Yeah things like that, and it's quite hard. You can't sort of like organise a holiday to go abroad or anything like that, because you can't plan it properly, you don't know where everything is. No. So we don't. We stay here in England, do our bits, pop around and see people's friends, and go down the beach to me quite a lot. Yeah. And shopping, that's yeah. it. Then we do a lot. No. Well, we were supposed to be on holiday this week, to be honest. Yeah. We couldn't go because I was getting really bad chest pains. Right. So we had to cancel the holiday. Yeah. It's taking it day by day, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> what would you advise from your own experience for people who feel they may have your condition? Get it checked out straight away. Yeah. Speak to a doctor or talk to someone. Yeah. See, I, I ignored all my symptoms. I was getting bad headaches and things like that. Was that because you wasn't aware of your symptoms? Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know I was going to have a heart attack. Like, no one can tell when you're going to, they can't tell you when you're going to have it. No. But I was getting bad headaches before, really like, severe headaches, and that was to do with blood pressure being so high. Right. And that's what caused my heart attack, was the blood pressure. Okay. And, yeah, if you get anything where you, you feel that you feel a bit lightheaded or anything like that, I got that quite a lot, dizziness, being dizzy all the time. Mm -hmm. Pains in my head. They're like migraine pains, not headaches. Okay. So they're quite intense More pains, intense. Yeah. yeah. And. And the pain in the jaw. Yeah, you get so pain, right? really sharp pain yeah. both sides, yeah. I got that, that's what I got first of all. And I, I didn't even get anything of it, I just thought I was with that pain. And then that evening it was progressed and got worse and worse and worse to the point where we called down because I was in so much pain. Yeah. Things like that, look out for anything to do with your heart. If you get a pain in your heart, in your chest area along here, yeah. it could be two things. A lot of people get muscle pain, right? but they think they're having a heart attack, but they're not. Yeah. It's just muscle pain. Heart attack is where your heart's constricting because blood flow can't get through it. Yeah. That's what causes an heart attack. So if you start getting like, like a tight, constricting feeling, 
that's when you need to talk to someone. Yeah. Go to, go to hospital, yeah, basically. straight away. So, is there anything <coughs> you would like to share from your experience that you feel may help others living with the same or similar condition? Oh, I was talk to people, because when I first had a heart attack, I could have gone to like um, this charity that deal with people that have heart attacks, and they help you sort of get back on your feet. Mm. And I didn't. Okay. I chose not to. Kind of shut yourself Yeah, down. I did. I, I didn't go anywhere for months. I stayed indoors. I laid in bed all day, didn't do nothing. Because yeah. I felt so rough and ill from it. And I should have done that. I should have gone with people that, that, that know about it and help me talk about it and give you these, you know, different options of how to get through it. Mm. I didn't. I just sort of shut myself away. Yeah. And that was a mistake I made because well, it made me feel maybe from yeah yeah it made me feel really depressed uh, to the point where I yeah. didn't care whether I lived or died. Yeah, it didn't bother me. Obviously now I don't have much change on. Every day I wake up is a bonus. Yeah, but at the time I was so depressed that I didn't care. Yeah, I know it's hard to say because I've got kids and my wife, but I was just fed up with being locked indoors all the time. Yeah, not being able like to go out and do normal yeah, things yeah. Never, like other fathers do. Mm. And go and play with the kids or go shopping with the kids and things like that. Yeah. I couldn't do any of that. No. From when I used to do it, I used to do it all the time, full time every day, down to where you couldn't do it at all and it's hard. Yeah. It's like you feel your whole life's been taken away. Yeah. And make sure you've got friends and family around you that can help you get through it. How and a good wife. Yeah. 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 My wife got me through it and I owe a lot to her to help with me, to be honest. Mm. If it weren't for her, like I said, I wouldn't be here. But she's she's done a lot in the last few years to help me. Yeah. And I haven't really done a lot back to help her. Yeah. Which but I do feel guilty for. But what we can change the future and hope it gets better. It's not it's just about supporting each other. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah, it it is. Doesn't yeah. matter whether Having that's friends physical and family support mentally, you is what is you need. Yeah. And talk to doctors regularly. I talk to my doctor every couple of weeks. Yeah. And they tell me different things, say try this, try that. And it does help. Yeah. It does help a lot. Okay. So what is the one positive thing you can share that you have that you have learned since living with your condition? You get disabled badge. <laughs> you can't you want. <laughs> Um, positive thing, being able to, right, a lot of people would look at you as if you're just a lazy fat kid sitting on a scooter, but you do get a lot of people that, in town especially, that will make room for you, move out of the way and go, oh, you know, thank you and all that, and I think, oh, there is people out here that are positive. Yeah. It will help you. There's a lot of people that don't, that give you the eye and say yeah. things. But, yeah, positively, talk to some people and so seek help. Yeah. You've got to be able to get talk to people to find out what's wrong with you and to have people support you there to help yeah. you through what you've got. Yeah. Don't just sit there and go, oh, go away, it'll be all right. Because it doesn't always work. Yeah. It's not always the answer. Yeah. So have friends and family around you, which is positive, to have yeah. them with you all the time and to understand and to listen to you and what your problems are. Yeah. So always talk to people. Okay, that's There's good. always someone out there that will be willing to listen and help you. Absolutely. Definitely. Might take a while to find one, but there's always someone there's out there. There's always someone, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that <coughs> is the end of our questions. So thank you You're for welcome. talking with us and taking the time to share your condition. You're welcome. If you'd like to do an interview with me on Rara's Venture to help spread awareness, please contact me via email or messaging me down below and I'll message you back. If you have only just joined and would like to help support Rara's Ventures, please hit that subscribe button. That will really help support what we're doing. Thank you for joining us today and thank you, Wayne. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take care, lots of love. Bye for now.